Apep was the ancient Egyptian deity who embodied chaos and took the form of a great snake beast. This deity was known by many monikers. In ancient Greek, he was known as Apophis. Apep was the chief enemy of the king of the gods, the sun god, Ra. The few descriptions of Apep's origin explain his birth took place after Ra, usually from Ra's own umbilical cord. But Apep was commonly believed to have existed since the beginning of time, in the waters of primeval chaos, known as Nu. The ancient Egyptians believed that this sun was Ra traveling in a boat across the heavens. Nighttime occurred when the boat entered the underworld, where he and his ally Seth battled against the great snake beast. Seth, who rode as a guardian in the front of the boat, attacked the snake with a spear and slew him, but the very next night the serpent would rise again and attack Ra, an eternal process. The ancient Egyptians believed that their king, given the title Pharaoh, could maintain the order of the world and assist Ra by performing rituals against Apophis. Although many serpents symbolized divinity and royalty, Apophis threatened the underworld and symbolized evil. He was believed to have existed since primeval times, but not mentioned by name until the Middle Kingdom was formed. It is possible that he was born out of the chaos and uncertainty brought about by the end of the Old Kingdom. In some stories, Apep waited for Ra in the Western Mountains, where the sun set, and in others, the serpent lurked just before the dawn in a faraway land. The wide range of Apep's possible locations gained him the title World Encircler. It was thought that his terrifying roar would cause the underworld to rumble. Myths sometimes say that Apep was trapped there because he had been the previous chief god overthrown by Ra, or because he was evil and had been imprisoned. Apep was thought to live in the underworld, and therefore sometimes named the Eater of Souls. Apep led an army of demons that preyed on the living and the dead. To defeat this malevolent force, a ritual was practiced known as the Banishing of Chaos. The Egyptian priests had a detailed guide to fighting this fierce deity. The guidebook had instructions for making wax models or small drawings of the serpent, which would then be spat on, mutilated, and burnt, whilst reciting spells that would try to kill the beast. Fearing that even the image of the snake could manifest its wicked power, the priests ensured that any rendering of Apep would always include another deity to subdue the monster. Apep was known by many titles, such as the evil lizard, the encircler of the world, the enemy, and the serpent of rebirth. He was not worshipped, he was feared. Also, he did not require any nourishment and could never be completely destroyed, only temporarily defeated. Within the lands between, there lives a demigod named Predor Rikard, son of Queen Renala of the Full Moon and Radagon, the second Elden Lord. Predor was once the title of a position in ancient Rome that contained two official capacities, first as the commander of an army and second as an elected magistrate. This position meant the individual had no real restrictions on his power. They acted as a chief priest, lawgiver, judge, and commander of the army. Being a praetor, Rikard was given free reign to pass judgment upon those within the Golden Order, as seen from the various torture chambers and locations like the subterranean Inquisition Chamber under the Volcano Manor. To aid in the capture of those who defied the Golden Order, Rikard utilized mechanical devices called abductor virgins, large metal constructs resembling a statue of a woman cradling a small silver baby to her chest as several snakes wind around her upper body. Some are even equipped with teleporters that directly send those trapped inside into Volcano Manor. These abductors may have been based off of Iron Maidens, a mythical torture device. Let us briefly focus on the silver baby the abductor holds. During the 18th century, Europeans started giving infants sterling silver items at their christenings to symbolize wealth. The old phrase, born with a silver spoon in your mouth, stems from gifting silver to babies in the hope that by giving the little ones these lavish items, wealth would follow them throughout their lives. Eventually, Rikard grew disillusioned with the Golden Order and sought to overthrow the Greater Will. Just as Apep was seen as a powerful snake, Rikard fed himself to the immortal Great Serpent located within the depths of Mount Galmir, giving him the new title of Lord of Blasphemy. After this transformation, his soldiers hunted for a weapon to slay him. This led them to the Serpent Hunter, a Great Spear, similarly to how Seth slew Apep with his spear. After defeating Rikard with the spear, he whispers that a serpent never dies. This connects to the Ouroboros, an ancient symbol depicting a serpent or dragon eating its own tail, which represents eternity and the continual renewal of life. Rikard achieved great power through sacrificing his body and his great rune. Sacrifice is a major theme within Elden Ring and is illustrated by the use of red glinstone. 
the Gelmir Glenstone staff and the staff of the guilty are both fueled by red glinstone. One staff enhances lava sorceries, the other fashioned from a smoldering sapling, both sharing traits of fire. Sacrifice activates the power of the red glinstone. Thorn sorcerers gouge out their own eyes to activate the power of the stone, while the great serpent religion of Gelmir is also associated with sacrifice. Additionally, we know that Rykard sought the ancient hexes of Gelmir, while the Staff of the Guilty is said to contain a similar hex magic. The Battle of Apep and Ra mentioned earlier is just a small battle of the overarching idea of evil warring against good over the fate of the world. Here are some other similar battles found in other mythos. Within Greek mythology, Typhon is said to have attempted to overthrow Zeus for the supremacy of the cosmos. The two fought in a cataclysmic battle which Zeus finally won with the aid of his thunderbolts. Defeated, Typhon was buried underneath Mount Etna, an active volcano on the east coast of Sicily, Italy. Typhon was immensely powerful, and on his shoulders were 100 snake heads that emitted fire. His bride was Echidna, who was half woman and half snake. Together they bore many of ancient Greek's most notable mythological creatures, featuring Cerberus, the Chimera, the Sphinx, the Hydra, and even the Gorgon. Speaking of monsters' children, located around Mount Gelmir reside the Snake Men, creatures birthed from a ritual involving Rykard's serpent form, the mother of most, if not all, of the Snake Men being Dedekar. Her item says that she indulged in every form of adultery and wicked pleasure imaginable, giving birth to a myriad of grotesque children. It is uncertain whether or not the birthing ritual was consensual, as it stated the snake men were unwanted offspring and describes the ritual itself as repellent, meaning causing disgust or distasteful. That being said, it all depends on the individual that noted the description, either being the point of view of the Golden Order or from Datacar's perspective. Fun fact, in some cultures, snakes were fertility symbols. For example, the Hobi people of North America performed an annual snake dance to celebrate the union of the snake youth, Tio, and his wife, known as the Snake Maiden. This ceremony is traditionally held in August, a rainy season, and was thought to renew the fertility of nature. Also, in some Hopi legends, snakes symbolize the umbilical cord, joining all humans to Mother Earth. The description of the Blasphemous Claw suggests Rygard was involved in the Night of the Black Knives. Given Godwin's connection to the solar eclipse, it is possible that an eclipse took place on that day in order to create an environment dark enough for the Black Knife assassins to enter the capital to commit his murder. Interestingly, by observing eclipses, medieval chroniclers unknowingly recorded some of history's largest volcanic eruptions. Of the 64 lunar eclipses that occurred in Europe between 1100 and 1300, the chroniclers had faithfully documented 51 of them. By examining the color and brightness of the total lunar eclipses in ancient texts, current day researchers could estimate the strength of the effect of volcanic eruptions had on the stratosphere and therefore global climate in the past. Truly fascinating stuff. I'll link the article below. Elden Ring is filled with astronomical events, and Apep fits perfectly because it's also the name of a star system that is surrounded by a vast complex of stellar wind and cosmic dust thrown into space by the high rotation speed of the binary's primary star and formed into a pinwheel shape by the secondary star's influence. The mention of the pinwheel shape directly links to the shape of Giza's wheel, a weapon utilized by Rykard's Inquisitor for the purpose of enacting severe pain. To summarize, Apep was a large serpent who fought against the ancient Egyptian god Ra and was slain nightly by a spear, while Rykard took the form of a great serpent in an attempt to defeat the Greater Will, a god in the lands between, and was also eventually slain by a spear. Both great serpents were known to eat souls, and believed to have existed since primeval times. Both had armies of demons under their command. In Rykard's case, they were his very own children. Even though Ra defeated Apep each night, the same battle was never ending. This conflict represents the eternal struggle of good versus evil. Thank you very much for your time, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful week.